hey guys welcome back to the channel and in this tutorial course we are going to create a prop in maya zbrush and substance painter so we will be creating a low poly model in maya and then unwrapping it and then we are going to send it to zbrush for sculpting and adding some details so basically we are going to create our high poly model in zbrush and then we're going to take both low poly and high poly mesh into marmosa tool bag and bake our normal and AO map and then we're going to texture it in substance painter and finally we're going to do all the rendering in marmosa tool bag so i hope you enjoy this tutorial so let's start so let's start with the modeling of our low poly model so we're going to start by taking a cube so let's take a cube and uh, change the width a little i'm going to keep it 0 0.7 and height to 7 change the depth to 0 0.4 or 0 0.35 now go to right view Press D to enter in pivot mode and press V to snap it to the point and snap it here. Place it up on the grid. Press E to rotate and uh, rotate it like this. Open your channel box. And uh, make sure it's rotated to 30 degrees. Place it up here. and uh, go to face mode and select this face in the bottom again go to right view and uh, rotate it like this and uh, do the same thing for this face on the top rotate it like this now go to vertex mode and select these vertices and pull them down just to fix the scale like this and maybe a little for these ones Let's scale it in the x axis like this. Now, again, go to right view and select it, then change the pivot to the center of this grid. So, press T to enter the pivot mode and press X to snap it to grid like this. Now, press Ctrl D to create a duplicate and rotate it like this now i'm going to create uh, this part here in the center so again go to right view take a cube place it up here and uh, open the parameter box increase the depth decrease the height Go to face mode and select this face, then rotate it like this and make sure it's aligned with this part. Again, let's select these vertices and extend them till here. Go to face mode and this time let's select this face. Go to right view and again rotate it and extend like this go to object mode and uh, let's fix the scale so scale it in the x-axis like this and uh, for this part i'm going to select it and uh, create a duplicate and place it down here so go to right view and 
go to vertex mode select these vertices and pull them to the side like this place them here on the grid pull them up and let's scale them just a little bit in the z axis like this and go to object mode and scale it in the x axis like this so we are almost done with the legs so we just need to add this part and these two stands and for that i'm going to take a cube go to right view increase the depth decrease the height pull it down like this uh, let's select this uh, go to vertex mode and select the vertices here and uh, pull them up like this select it and uh, pull it up then scale it just a little bit like this and for these two i'm going to take a new cube and go to right view pull it down decrease the height depth and place it here Go to vertex mode and let's pull these vertices up just a little bit and these ones down select this one and create a duplicate place it here on the other side now let's create this uh, back support so let's go to left view and uh, let's take a cube pull it up till here go to vertex mode select these vertices and pull them down like this then scale like this and uh, select these vertices scale it down just a little bit then go to object mode and scale down this cube pull it out like this maybe a little bit more scaling down Go to front view and place it here like this. Now let's create this part, and for that I'm going to take a cube. Go to right view and pull this up. Decrease the depth. I'm going to keep it to zero point two five. Pull it down till here and uh, increase the width. Let's take 10, 
move it to the right like this maybe a little bit more width let's take 12 and now let's create this support so for that i'm going to take uh, a new cube so go to right view first and uh, take a cube pull this up decrease the depth to 0 0.25 or 0 0.23 go to front view and uh, decrease the width to 0 0.25 and also height again change the pivot to this point and uh, place it here and then rotate now go to vertex mode select these vertices press ctrl shift right click and change it to component and pull these vertices up go to face mode and select this top face then rotate it like this pull this up and align it with this other cube now select this bottom face and again rotate this Pull this down, place it here like this, now go to object mode and change it to world and just pull it up like this, go to vertex mode, select these vertices and pull them to the side like this and these ones little here. Select this and uh, place it here like this. So the legs are done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything and I'm going to combine. Then go to front view and uh, create a duplicate place this one here and rotate it like this select everything and place it to the center of the grid So our low poly is finished. First, I'm going to delete uh, this duplicated part, and now I'm going to select this and uh, separate it. So let's start with these two. So combine them first and isolate them. Go to edge mode, select all the edges, then bevel, decrease the fraction, and uh, increase one segment. Now bring back your model and I'm going to repeat the same thing with all these other cubes. So I'm going to select these two first, combine and isolate. Go to edge mode and select all the edges. Then bevel. Turn down the fraction to 0 0.2 and increase one segment. Uh, maybe fraction to 0 0.1. Now bring back the other parts, select these two, combine, again go to edge mode, select all the edges, then bevel, decrease the fraction to 0 0.1, add one segment, now select 
these two again combine and go to edge mode select all the edges then bevel decrease the fraction to 0 0.1 add one segment and now select this one go to edge mode select all the edges bevel and decrease the fraction to 0 0.2 add one segment and at last now select this one and edges then bevel decrease the fraction and segment so we are pretty much done select everything and uh, deselect this one now combine create a duplicate place this one here and rotate like this so our model is finished and now we're going to unwrap it and export it to zbrush for sculpting so i'm going to select this and uh, what we can do we can open the outliner we can select this part go to edit and delete by type history rename it as left leg select this one again go to edit delete by type history and this is right leg just to organize our project and now select this one delete by type history and rename it as top board So this is our low poly model and now let's unwrap it and then send it to ZBrush. So to unwrap it what I'm going to do is I'm going to again delete this one because these two are identical so I'm going to unwrap only this one and then duplicate again. So let's start with unwrapping. So let's uh, change our custom workspace to UV editing. and let's unwrap it so select it and go to create then automatic mapping go to edge mode and select this edge press shift right click and use move and sue and one more time you can press g to repeat the command and uh, one last time for this one now you'll see some unattached edges here so select these again move and sue Go to shell mode and uh, place this one out. Go to edge mode again and uh, again select these edges. Move and sew. Now at last, select these two edges. Move and sew again. And here, attach these edges. Go to UV shell and uh, layout, rotate it and layout again. So this one is unwrapped. Now let's unwrap the other parts. I'm going to select it and uh, separate. Now select this one, isolate it and uh, go to create and use camera based. Go to edge mode, select this part and this edge and this one to create the seam. Just follow along and select the edges like this.
now go to your uv editor and in the edge mode cut these uvs go to uv shell and unfold then layout now use orient shell to fix the orientation select this edge then move and sew same for this one and again select these two move and sew and look for the unattached edges move and sew repeat the same command here by pressing g now since these two parts are identical so what we can do is uh, we can either delete this one and duplicate this one again and place it on this side or we can use a transfer attribute for this one so i'm going to select this and uh, go to mesh and you'll see this uh, transfer attribute click here on this option box and go to edit then reset everything if you have used this before now what you want to do is uh, go to this attribute setting and change this sample space to component and now select uh, the mesh with the uvs so this one has the already unwrapped uh, uvs i'm going to select this and press shift then select the other one again uh, to which you want to transfer this uv set and click on this uh, transfer now if you see this the, then uh, the uvs of this part is also unwrapped so this is a very easy way to transfer your uv sets uh, from one mesh to another if they are identical so let's uh, move on to other parts so i'm going to select this one or let's try this one now so i'm going to select this one go to create and automatic again select this edge then move and sew and then attach these two then layout now select this one and again go to create automatic pretty much all the unwrapping uh, for this particular model is going to be automatic and uh, with this uh, move and sew feature now select these two and uh, now these two are also identical so we're going to use the transfer attribute one more time so let's select this one and go to create automatic and let's move and sew these uv shells
and uh, layout again go to mesh and transfer attribute reset change the attribute sample space to component select your mesh and select the other one you want to transfer your uvs to and click on this transfer and now these are both unwrapped now select this one isolate it go to create then use camera based go to edge mode and select these edges to create the seams Go to your UV editor and cut, then unfold and uh, orient shell. Select this edge, then move and sew. Select this one, move and sew again. And these ones, then unfold one more time. See these unattached edges? Move and sew. So at last we are going to unwrap this part. So isolate it, go to create and camera based and select these edges to create themes. Go to your UV editor, cut and unfold everything, then orient shell, layout for now and uh, now let's select this part and move and sew like this. and at last do it here like this unfold and see if there are any un any unattached edges so let's select them move and sew
so everything is unwrapped now i'm going to select these and uh, go to uv shell and layout and i'm going to combine everything and uh, then press ctrl d to create a duplicate and place it here on the other side now again select everything and go to uv shell then layout and make sure the uvs aren't flipped so click on this shaded and make sure your uvs are blue and not red so everything is fine and uh, you can turn on checkers to see if there is any stretching in your uvs so everything looks fine now it's time to send everything to zbrush and sculpt all the details so select everything and uh, open your outliner go to edit and delete by type history and we have these meshes let's rename them again so our modeling and unwrapping is done so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select everything go to modify and freeze transformation edit delete by type history now go to file and uh, click on this export selection and choose fbx as your export barrier underscore base So now I'm going to go in ZBrush and import this mesh into ZBrush for sculpting. So we are now in Photoshop and we are going to create an alpha for ZBrush. So I've already made a tutorial on this. So if you want to watch that video, then you can go check it out on my channel. So I have this wood texture and I'm going to go to my image and adjustment. Go to hue and saturation and uh, turn down the saturation now add a level and increase this highlight and this shadows something like this so I'm going to export this as PNG or JPG. Click export and export your alpha. So now let's go to ZBrush and import our mesh and start sculpting. So now we are in ZBrush. I'm going to import my mesh. So let's go to import and uh, import your fpx file open and uh, just leave everything to default and deselect anything if it is selected click ok and when you see your mesh in this palette just draw like this and uh, press t or click on this edit Now before we start I'm going to do one more thing uh, I'm going to go to this preference and uh, edit now enable this allow click to solo so I'm going to show you what it does in a second so let's go to geometry and uh, subdivide it so I'm going to turn my polyframe on for now and uh, as you can see in this active point we only have 1064 points or polygons so I'm going to subdivide it. So since we already added some supporting edges in Maya, we don't need to turn this smooth off. I'm going to subdivide it a few times. So I think 262,000 polygons are good enough. And I'm going to delete the lower subdivision. Now mesh is constructed with different parts. So I'm going to split this mesh. So let's go to sub tool and uh, scroll down. And here in the split, click to this split to parts and okay 
that's going to split all the parts of this model so i'm going to turn the polyframe off now we can see the entire mesh uh, what you can do is that you can select any parts for example if i want to select this part and i want to isolate it or only want to see this part so what you can do is you can go here and turn this on so it's going to isolate it but we have a quick way since we enabled allow click to solo what we can do is we can press alt and select the part which we want to solo click on it and just click anywhere in the canvas like this and then it's going to solo it or isolate it and if you want to bring back your model just click anywhere and it's going to bring back the entire mesh so this will come in handy when you're working with a model which has a lot of parts so we're going to start with this one so let's uh, collapse this and uh, open your geometry and uh, we still have only 13,000 polygons for this mesh so i'm going to dynamesh it so increase the resolution let's take 300 for something like this and uh, dynamesh it and now if you see the uh, polygons here it's now 21,000 now we can turn this dynamesh off and we can subdivide it again to add some more subdivisions or polygons so we can press ctrl d so i think 85,000 or 340,000 should be enough and uh, let's turn this off and uh, this polyframe and i'm going to isolate it so press alt and click on this object and then click anywhere else and uh, let's sculpt this so turn on this uh, perspective and i'm going to change the material for this one so i'm going to take this matte cap gray and let's change the brush so i'm going to take this trim dynamic and i'm going to change the draw size to something like this and this sculpt or we can use this let's go to light box and brushes and let's open this trim and uh, this trim smooth border works fine with the wood i'm going to take this and then sculpt like this turn down the draw size increase the focal shift like this and just add some damage to these corners and you can change the brush anytime you want so let's go back to this trim dynamic just a little bit damaged not too much so this zbrush process is going to be a little bit tedious because we're going to do a lot of repetitive things so there is not going to be much commentary about it so just use your trim dynamic and add some damage like this and now we are going to use the alpha in a minute so and you can also turn on the symmetry if you want if you don't want to work that much on a simple prop so we are going to turn that on with other parts
so we are done with this part and uh, now let's use alpha so i'm going to go here in the brush and uh, take standard and for alpha i'm going to go here in this alpha and import Now we have this alpha here. I'm going to go in the stroke and uh, change it to drag rectangle. Now you can just drag and drop your alpha on this mesh. So you can just drag like this. Now the intensity is a little bit too much. So what you can do is you can go to this intensity and turn it down to something like seven. Increase the size and focal shift to something like this and then add some detail. Maybe we can increase the intensity a little. So let's take 13 and let's try now. So this is better. So you can see this hard line here. So we are going to get rid of it by changing the focal shift like this increase the draw size and you can change some of these details so what you can do is you can go to this brush and uh, i'm going to change to this uh, trim dynamic and just sculpt something like this and just make some changes so it doesn't look too repetitive like this Now let's bring back your model. So I'm going to click anywhere in this canvas and it's going to bring back the model like this. And now we're going to repeat the same thing over and over. So I'm going to press Alt and click on this, then click in the canvas to isolate it. And uh, Let's turn on this poly frame and it has 13,000 polygons. So I'm going to go to geometry and dynamesh. So again, let's change the resolution to 300 dynamesh. And turn this off, then subdivide it like this. now take trim dynamic and start sculpting the corners
So the corner sculpting of this part is done. So I'm going to again use my alpha. So let's uh, go to standard and uh, let's decrease the intensity for this one and drag like this. And uh, again, let's take the trim dynamic and sculpt this part. Increase the draw size. Do something like this. And uh, on the other side as well. So I hope you understand how the pipeline works and uh, one more thing, uh, make sure to save your document because ZBrush crashes a lot. So make sure you quick save every few minutes. So I'm going to save this project. and uh, keep clicking on this uh, quick save every few minutes so you don't lose your process so let's sculpt this part so let's press alt and select this and uh, let's go to geometry and uh, increase the resolution dynamesh turn this off and uh, subdivide it And let's sculpt. So take trim dynamic and uh, sculpt the corners. It's not necessary to add this much volume count. So that's up to your choice and the demand of the crop you are working on.
so the corners are done let's use the alpha change it to standard and uh, import the alpha in the stroke to drag rectangle save your file in the intensity and now let's add the texture We need to add some more intensity, so let's increase it to 14. And the reason it's showing you this alpha a little bit blur because the polygon counts are low in this mesh, so that's okay. You don't need that much resolution for something more like this. And now let's take the frame dynamic and sculpt. So that's it and i think i'm going to end this part here so because uh, because the entire process is a little bit tedious and uh, i'm going to repeat the same thing i did till now so when i'm done with this sculpting i'm going to take this to maya so i'll see you in a minute so our sculpting is done and uh, now i'm going to merge all these parts together so in your sub tools go here in this merge and uh, click on this merge down and okay it's going to merge all these together if you keep clicking on this so what merge down does is when you select this object and click on this merge down then this and this object which is down to this barrier high are going to be merged together so if you keep clicking it's going to keep merging all the objects below this sub tool and now this is one high poly mesh now 
Now I'm going to export this hypoly mesh. So go here in the export and I'm going to export it as barrier underscore high as OBJ. Now I'm going to close ZBrush and move to Maya and import a high poly there. So this was our low poly. And I'm going to go to file and uh, import our high poly mesh. Now our high poly is imported. So what you can do is I'm going to select my base mesh here and I'm going to select this part. And I'm going to move it to the left just a little bit so that we can have this overlapping detail and uh, i'm going to repeat the same thing with this one something like this So our uh, low poly is fine as well. We just tweaked some things like this. And now I'm going to select my low poly and uh, export it again. But before exporting, I'm going to select my low poly and go to mesh display and uh, select this softer edge. And now I'm going to select this, go to file and export selection and uh, export. And since we made some changes to our high poly as well, I'm going to export my high poly too. So I'm going to select all these. First, I'm going to put them in a group and uh, rename it as high poly. Go to file export selection and uh, export it as barrier underscore high as obj and it's going to take a few minutes because we have a lot of polygons in our scene so our mesh is exported i'm just going to save my file and bake our mesh so now we are in marmoset tool bag and we are going to bake our high poly mesh onto our low poly mesh 
so i'm going to click on this import object and uh, let's uh, go to where our project is and i'm going to open both low poly and high poly meshes It's going to take a while to import these meshes because my high poly have about 12 million polygons which is quite a lot for something like this so here are our meshes now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new bake project so let's go to a scene and uh, click on this new bake project now to bake our mesh what we need to do is we have to select our low poly and uh, and drag it to here to low and uh, we're going to do the same thing with this high and uh, drag it to this high now go to your bake project and i'm going to change the tangent space to maya and i'm going to select my maps here so i'm going to like this normal and this AO map and here you can change the resolution so I think 2k maps are fine and I'm going to change the output so click here and let's go to a scene and in the image I'm going to save my bake projects here so just rename and click on this bake and it's going to take a while to bake all these details so just sit back and let it finish now our maps are baked so if i go to my project folder and uh, see these two maps so we have uh, an ambient occlusion and a normal map now we're going to export these maps and our low poly mesh in substance painter for texturing so that's it for baking and next part is going to be texturing in substance so we're going to move on to that so now we are in substance painter and we're going to create a new document for our project so let's import our low poly mesh and here in the import baked maps import your uh, normal and uh, AO maps which we baked in Marmoset toolback so select both of them and open and click OK I go to texture size settings and uh, click on this bake mesh maps in the output size to 2k and just leave rest of the settings to default and click on bake selected texture now our maps are baked and now we're going to go here and uh, we have these AO and normal map we imported so I'm going to select this normal map and drop it here in the normal and it's going to show you the high poly detail on this mesh and we're going to do the same thing with AO so select and drop it here in the AO and it looks fine but we have some issues here so as you can see these two parts are a, a little bit darker than the others so we can fix this so we are going to open this AO map in photoshop and we are going to take a new layer take the lasso tool and make the selection for these parts and fill it with white color like this and let's do the same thing for this one
now save this AO map. So I'm going to save it as fix. Select this AO fixed and drop it here. Define it as texture and import to current session. And now replace it with the previous one. And now as you can see that this issue is fixed. Now we can start texturing. So go to layers, delete this empty layer. And we can try some of these materials. So this one looks fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this and change the color a little bit and uh, scale. Now close this and uh, add black mask, go to polygon fill and set it to mesh, select everything and uh, deselect these three parts because the rotation of the texture for these parts are wrong. So we are going to deselect these and we're going to create a duplicate of this one. Remove the black mask and add it again go to polygon fill and fill these parts now these veins and fibers are supposed to be horizontal so i'm going to open this and in the base wood i'm going to rotate it to 90 and also this wood fiber to 90 and the same thing goes for this wood veins like this now this looks much better now we need to add a paint layer so i'm going to select this one and uh, drop it here let's try this So this one's not looking very good, so I'm going to delete it. And select this one. So this one looks fine. I'm going to open it and change the color a little bit. Do something like this and let's add a black mask and add generator select this metal edge wear and I'm going to invert this increase the wear level and wear contrast use dry planner and We can add some more grunge. So I'm going to change the grunge scale to something like this. Now let's add some decals. So I'm going to take a new fill layer, turn off normal and height and uh, metal. Change the color to white and roughness to 0 0.7. Let's rename it and right click, add a black mask and add a paint layer. 
let's go to brushes and select a basic card and in the alpha let's search for square and select this shape square squeeze increase the hardness to one and decrease the squeeze to something like this increase the size press control to rotate it now we are going to turn on the symmetry so go here and uh, turn on the z symmetry like this and add one here and one here maybe we can decrease the squeeze a little bit 0 0.3 so add one here and one here now again rotate and add one here and one here now we are going to remove this paint from these parts so i'm going to turn off symmetry and go to polygon fill and change the color to black and i'm going to select these parts to remove the color like this and same thing goes for these parts as well and we need to add some more text here so i'm going to take a new paint layer and return of normal height and metal increase the roughness to 0 0.7 and i'm going to go here and search for font let's try this and uh, right here so this one is a little bit bold i'm going to change it to this and decrease the size and write it here maybe we can turn it down like this and you can write it on the other side as well so i'm going to write this here and this one up here Now let's uh, decrease the opacity a little bit. To 80. So let's select this paint and I'm going to change it to dirt and uh, remove some of this dirt. So I'm going to turn down the opacity and spacing also the flow and let's remove some of it. Press X to put your brush to erasing mode.
so i'm going to take a new fill layer and uh, search for this crunch change the blending mode to linear dodge or subtract decrease the balance like this and uh, now i'm going to add a rust layer but before that let's add some nails i'm going to take a new paint layer and uh, let's search for nails so we have this nail here so i'm going to add some like this i'm going to decrease the size and let's add one here one here and one up here let's turn on the symmetry so that we don't have to work like this so i'm going to change it to x let's add one here and one here and one up here increase the size and add one here and on all those sides again let's decrease the size and add one here one here and one here Turn off the symmetry. Now let's add that rust material. I'm going to use this rust fine and drop it on the top of all other layers. And I'm going to add a black mask, then generator, and add dirt. I'm going to change the color. Do something like this. And uh, let's go to dirt. Increase the contrast and let's decrease the level. Maybe let's keep the contrast to 0 0.3 and use tri planner. Increase the Dirt level, something like this. And uh, add a paint layer. Take this dirt brush and press X and remove some of this rust like this and we are good to go now we can turn down the opacity of this layer let's keep it 85 should be fine 
let's keep it 90 and now let's export our textures so go to file export textures and uh, go to our project in the image i'm going to create a folder textures and i'm going to keep the output template to document channels plus normal plus ao with no alpha and i'm going to keep the file type to targa size to 4k and that's it i'm going to export so our export are done So we exported the textures from Substance Painter and now we are in Marmoset Toolback. So I'm going to import my mesh here. So go here and click on this import model and uh, let's import our low poly mesh. Now you can delete these materials and let's create a new one and we're going to rename it as barrier. And we're going to import our maps here. So click on this normal map and uh, go to your textures and import normal OpenGL. So it's not going to show you anything here. You have to assign this material for this model. So what you can do, you can either drag and drop here or you can just select this and drop it here on this barrier low. And now you can see your normal map. Now do the same thing for this albedo. Click here and import your base color. Here goes the roughness and uh, metallic. Go to this occlusion and uh, enable the occlusion channel and import your AO map. Now let's go to your sky and I'm going to change the HDRI image here. So go to your presets and uh, you have a tons of HDRI images to choose from. So I'm going to use this alley bike. So I'm going to double click and it's going to change the image. And now I'm going to change the mode to color and uh, change it to something. like this now i'm going to assign some lights i'm going to change it to like this i'm going to assign a light here so i'm going to change the view to like this and i'm going to press ctrl l or what you can do you can go to scene add object light and here use this directional light or spotlight i'm going to use spotlight for this one so you can also press ctrl l for that so press ctrl L and it's going to add a light like this and I'm going to add one light here. So again press ctrl L and one on the back. So it's a simple three point lighting system. Now we need to create some shadows and for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my mesh and go to scene add object and uh, select this shadow catcher and now you can see the shadows but here we are seeing multiple shadows so what we need to do is i'm going to go in the light 2 and uh, turn off cast shadows and the same thing for this light 3 so now we have only one shadow and now let's do some tweaking with the lights so i'm going to go in my first light and I'm going to change it to 5.5 and also color something like this. Let's go to other light and I'm going to set it to 5 and uh, make it bluish. Like this and with this light i'm going to change it to six or let's try something like 
सेवन एंड आई एम गोइंग टू चेंज इट टू रेड एंड कीप इट लाइक दिस Now, if you select your shadow catcher, press R to scale and scale this, then you can see the entire shadow. And make sure it's aligned with this object. So you go to your front view, and you can zoom in and see that your object is right on the top of this shadow catcher. Now go to your sky. and i'm going to rotate my sky like this to get a nice view of my model something like this and i'm going to increase the child like brightness to 5 and let's go to render and uh, i'm going to turn on this cascade and ao you can choose the occlusion strength according to your need so i'm going to keep it to 1.2 and also turn on local reflection here you can set your image size you want to render so i'm going to keep it 1080p and i'm going to increase the samples to 1000 now let's go to your main camera and turn on save frame so you can see how much of your scene is going to render so this one looks fine and uh, i'm going to change the tone mapping as well so let's take acs and i'm going to increase exposure a little bit and contrast keep the exposure to 2.5 and increase the sharpness to 0.2 and uh, also the vignette to something like this to 0.5 and i'm going to add some green so 0.25 looks fine now let's go back to our light and i'm going to change the background color one more time to something like this and uh, let's change the view a little also you can increase some brightness if your scene needs some So this looks fine and now I'm going to render it. So you can press F11 or you can go to your render and all image and it's going to render. So press F11 to render the image. and this is our final render so let's move to unreal engine 5 and we are going to import this model in there and assign the textures and see how it looks in the engine so now we are in unreal engine so let's import our meshes and textures
I'm going to press control and space to bring this dock and let's dock it here and now I'm going to go in my project and let's go to scenes and uh, select our mesh so I'm going to select my barrier low poly mesh and drop it here like this so we're gonna have to do few things here so first click on this combine meshes because our model was in different parts and also set this material import method to do not create material and click on this import and now we have one single mesh so we have imported our mesh so let's go back to substance painter we are going to export our textures for unreal engine 5 so i'm going to go in the file and export textures again uh, go to your folder where you want to export your textures and i'm going to create a new folder so unreal engine textures and i'm going to set the template to unreal engine 4 packed file type to anything you want i'm going to stick to targa and 4k and just export so now we have four maps we have base color, we have emissive, we have normal and we have a masked map which contains our occlusion, roughness and metallic. Since we did not use any emissive component in our textures, so this map is going to be empty. So let's go to Unreal Engine. And I'm going to create a new folder here and name it texture. Open it and I'm going to add uh, those textures here so i'm going to go to that folder and uh, select everything and drag and drop these textures here and if it shows the warning for your normal map just click ok and now i'm going to create a material so right click and create a material barrier material now first what you have to do is you have to open your masked map and turn off this srgb and then save now open your material and select all these maps and import here So let's assign our uh, albedo map to base color and normal to normal. Now we have this masked map. So we have this occlusion, roughness and metallic. So our R channel is containing occlusion, green is containing roughness and blue goes to metallic. So click on this R and connect it to AO and green to roughness and blue to metallic and now you can save now close this and uh, let's go back here and select your object place it here anywhere you want and let's rotate it like this and uh, i'm going to go to that texture folder selecting this material and drop it here like this now let's scale it just a little bit like this and uh, let's add some lights so i'm going to close this content browser I'm going to go to create lights and add a directional light set it to movable scroll down and uh, enable this atmosphere sunlight let's go to create again and in the lights add a skylight 
and again set it to movable and turn on real time capture so let's go to your visual effects and select this sky atmosphere and again go to your visual effects and this time let's add some clouds so select this volumetric cloud and now we need to add some fog so i'm going to go back to visual effects and add some exponential height fog turn on volumetric fog and one last time go to create visual effects and uh, take this post process volume and in this uh, post process search for infinite enable it now search for exposure and turn on minimum and maximum and set it both to one like this Now let's add a plane so i'm going to go here in the landscape mode and i'm going to just create a new landscape now select your mesh pull it up place it on this landscape and you can go here and change it to front view to make sure that placed right so i'm going to place it here turn off this grid and uh, let's check so this looks fine now press ctrl l and change the light like this and now select your directional light and uh, decrease the intensity so something like this and to take a high resolution screenshot what you can do is you can go here and click on this high resolution screenshot and you can also increase the size multiplier so i'm going to increase it to two and click on this take a screenshot and it's going to save a screenshot like this so you can go to your project go to this texture and uh, right click onto this material and go here show in explorer and it's going to open your project folder so let's go back to this project and in this saved it's going to show you this folder screenshot and here you have your high resolution screenshot so you don't want your component to show in your screenshot what you can do is you can go back to unreal engine and as you can see that uh, this is the post process volume so what you can do is you can press g to enter the game mode and it's going to hide all those components and now if you take a screenshot it's not going to show you all those components so i hope you enjoyed this course and uh, you find it useful make sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it and drop a like on this video and you can also share this tutorial if you want and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching